This is a coal train moving through Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Coal is a hydrocarbon used for fuel. It's in big demand by electric power plants. Coal is delivered to the power plant from the mine by freight trains. Coal cars are heavy, and this area of Colorado has mountains. So extra cars are placed in the middle of the train to help get this heavy load uphill. Extra locomotives in the middle or the end of a train are called helpers. This coal train also has helpers on the end. Looking at this small train yard, we see locomotives painted up as Southern Pacific. Union Pacific gained ownership of them when they bought out Southern Pacific Railroad. Here is another huge train yard near Sacramento, California, owned by Union Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, leave the Roseville station to the left of the train are the uh, massive freight yards of the Union Pacific Railroad here in uh, Roseville. Notice all of the buildings. Many of these are shops where train cars are serviced and repaired. And in the past, Southern Pacific used to even make some of its own train cars. Have you ever wondered what a freight train's controls look like inside the cab? This demonstration at a model railroad show in Medford, Oregon, shows what an engineer sees inside the cab of a locomotive. This engineer explains how a freight train is controlled in the mountains of Oregon. We've got a 60-car freight train, probably weighs about 4,500 tons, something like that. So, uh, I've got uh, five of these locomotives, so I've got, I've got a lot of dynamic braking capability, but I'm going to have to use my air brakes also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the train first to the top of the mountain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up here, wait for 10 seconds. And you have five locomotives, is that what you said? Yes, I have five. So how can you control I can control every locomotive in the consist because uh, they're set up. All the air brake controls are connected between each locomotive. And you've also got a, a big jumper cable between each locomotive. So I can control the throttles and the brakes of every locomotive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm coming down the hill, so I'm gradually uh, going to my dynamic brake here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly, as my train tops over the hill, increase my dynamic brake. And what it's going to do is it's going to cause my train, as it comes over the top of the hill, to slowly bunch up. As the cars come over, they bunch up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an initial reduction of my air brakes. So now what I'm doing is I'm setting the brakes on the cars. So this is a minimum set, about six, approximately 68 pounds. And then I'm going to sit here and watch my speedometer and see what my train's going to do. And if I need to uh, give it any more air brake, go ahead and I'll pull this over a little bit more and watch my air gauges. So I take about two or three more pounds. And what I do now is once I have my air brakes set, I've got my dy dynamics, I can sit here and basically control the speed of my train just with my dynamic brake now. So if I need to if I need to slow my train down, start the speed looks like it's gonna increase, I'm gonna give it more dynamic brake. Come around the curve, the train's gonna it's gonna drag coming around the curve, so I'm gonna have to back out a little bit to so try and maintain my train speed. Once, once my train's totally off the mount now, I can go ahead and release my train brakes and the air brakes. I'll control my train at the speed with my dynamic brake. And when I need to, I'll go completely out of dynamic brake and back it up. Hobbyists can control their own trains using a model railroad and remote controls. Look at all the different freight cars on this model train. I grew up in a small town where the Southern Pacific Railroad came through. While stopped at a crossing, I knew the end of the train was coming when I saw the caboose. All freight trains had cabooses back then. The caboose was the rolling office of the train's conductor. He could see the rest of the train from here. 
In today's computerized world, the caboose came to be seen as an unnecessary expense. As soon as the unions agreed, the railroads took the cabooses off, replacing them with nothing but a red light hung on the last car of the train. In Dunsmere, California, you can spend the night in a caboose or a boxcar. Just follow the signs from Interstate 5 to the Dunsmere Railroad Park. I got to spend the night in a caboose from the Santa Fe Railroad. It had a bed and a bathroom as well as this elevated cupola where I could sit where countless freight conductors used to sit. While passenger railroad service is only a tiny echo of what it was in the past, freight trains are hauling more and more cargo across the United States. There's more freight carried by trains than ever was before, and railroads are investing huge amounts of money building gigantic train yards and more tracks. Remember, those tracks are private property, and it's against the law to walk on them. It's also very important to stop at rail crossings. I hope you've enjoyed this look at freight trains, and thanks for watching this special feature from Adventures in English. I'm John Letts.